Hey y'all, Kay here with Crafting Cousins. We're so excited that you decided to stop by our channel today. Now, don't stop the video just because I'm doing something a little bit different. Hang in there because I'm going to talk about all I want for Christmas, and if I didn't have it, this is exactly what I would want. This is the X-Tool F1, and you may have seen the first video where I used it. I have a red bow on it today because it is the perfect Christmas present. If you have been wondering what your friends and family could get you, and maybe they want to pull all of their money together, got it right here for you. So this would be your favorite Christmas present. And today I'm going to be using some of the accessories that come with the machine and we're going to make some Christmas presents. So stick around to the end and you may like exactly what you see. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is engraving on some wooden ornaments and I'm going to be using mine for presents and I'm also going to make some that I can put on the napkins as little keepsakes for a dinner party so people can take them home with them. So let's start that project first. Now the next thing I want to do is a little bit of unboxing. I have two new babies to go with my F1 to make it an even more versatile and useful tool. We're going to be looking at the F1 slide extension. I'll be hooking that up first and we'll make a project with it. And I'm also going to be unboxing the RA2 tumbler tools so that we can do glasses, we can do etching and um, engraving on metal cups. So stick around for that. We'll do the unboxing and then we'll come back and hook it up to our machine. So we want to do a little unboxing. This is our X-Tool F1 slide extension that will allow us to do longer pieces of cutting. It has the grooves on the top, just like the cutting mat that I showed you in the first video. Um, let me kind of turn it around. You've got measurements, you've got grooves so that you can place in, I'm assuming, your um, brackets to help hold things in place. But really nice and heavy piece. And then the box is really neat too. It comes with little grooves cut out. Let me see if I can turn it up. It comes with little grooves cut out where all your accessories go. You've got your different mounting brackets in here. That's really nice. You've got a tool so you can connect it to your machine. And we have this type bracket to keep everything lined up. It's flexible in terms. So we're going to hook that up in a few minutes to the machine. Here's the other one on this side. And over here, we have some longer brackets. We have our measurements in centimeters and inches. That's really neat. And of course, on this side, more of our brackets to mount things. Because once you're cutting, you don't want your wood moving out of place, right? And then we have our connector tool right here. It's not very long, doesn't take a whole lot. So in a few minutes, I'll go over to the machine and then we'll start mounting it to the machine or connecting it to the machine is probably a better way to put it so that we can begin to cut some longer items. In the manual, it shows your list of items. And again, it's in multiple languages, so you have to kind of scroll through there. And just a few pages of instructions. For the second unboxing, I have the X-Tool Rotary Attachment 2 Pro. This is the RA2. We're going to be attaching this to our machine so that we can do cups and mugs and glasses. I'm so excited to try this one. Let's unbox it. And we'll open this up. We have our instruction manual right on top. This will fit on other X-Tool machines. You just have to know which connectors to use. This box is a lot like the first box I showed you. We've got all of our parts and we have all of the sections cut so that we can store them later because you won't use everything at one time. For instance, if I'm using the slide extension, I won't be using this and vice versa. So we got all of our parts in there. And of course, our booklet shows us exactly how to use those. 
And on top, we have several accessory pieces. We have a measuring tape here. So we'll talk about all of these parts when we connect it to our machine. And here's our part with the belt. And some more pieces to hold the sides of the machine. So everything we need is in this box and we'll get it all put together in just a little bit and put it on the machine and actually do some tumblers. For one of my projects, of course, I'm going to be cutting some wood on the slide extension. I bought this 4 inch by 24 inch piece of wood at Hobby Lobby. It costs $4 and my total cost will be about $2 for the wood I'm going to cut. I'm also going to be doing some ornaments. I got one package at Hobby Lobby on the left. It was 50% off, but there are only like nine in the package. I got the package on the right and it has 20. It came from Lowe's this year and it was 40% off, so I only paid $3, a much better deal. I'm going to be using my RA2 accessory to engrave on a cup. Although I didn't do this cup for the video, I will be doing it later. Today, I'm going to be doing a big red cup. I'm going to be using a couple of these wooden ornaments that I got at Lowe's. I'm going to use them as tags for my presents under my tree. I come in first with some gold acrylic paint and paint all of the tops of the ornaments. And then I come in with this red chalk paint and I'm going to paint the bottoms of all three. Red and gold are my colors for Christmas, including green. And so that's why I chose these colors. This did take two coats for the bottom. I am using Xtool software to design the names for my piece. I just went in and marked uh, three millimeter wood. I'm going to center it here on the bottom of the F1 and close the container completely. And once we do that, we can go through the framing process to make sure that everything is centered. Here I'm using my computer to mark three millimeter bass wood, and then I go in and click on framing to make sure everything is centered. Now our piece is centered and I'm going to go in and stop the framing. I'm going to turn on my desktop smoke purifier and then I will click on processing. And of course we need to turn the knob on the right hand side of the machine to make sure our blue and red dots are lined up on top of each other. So I'm going to click on processing that will bring up the second screen and then we'll click on start and then of course move to the right hand side of the machine, push the upper right hand button and that will begin the engraving process. I forgot to tell you that I clicked on engraving. I'm not going to be cutting through this piece. I'm only going to be engraving it. To do both names on this ornament took exactly 45 seconds. Super fast. And once everything is complete, the machine has turned off, I'm going to open up the carrier and take out our ornament. Now, the spacing is a little wonky in the middle there. That's just a default with the software. I think next time I will bring each name in individually. So to redeem myself, I'm going to go in with a second ornament. I'm going to center it into my machine and then I'll start programming on the computer. I'm going to put in the name Brandon. And of course I ran the software. I clicked three millimeter basswood, went through all of the process, closed the cover, and we're going to engrave once again using the factory default settings. I'm going to use the exact same process I used on the last ornament. I am always going through the framing process, then you go to process, then it brings you to the second screen and you will click on start. And of course the machine doesn't start until we actually press the blinking button on the right hand side upper part of the machine. Now go through all of the process, make sure you click engraving, make sure you click three millimeter basswood. Don't skip any of the steps. And just so you know, this name took 29 seconds for our machine to totally engrave and complete. I do like the looks of the engraving on these ornaments. It kind of gives it a gold tone, but you could back off the power just a little bit. I think things change a little bit when you paint them ahead of time. And once the machine stops, I'm going to open the cover and this is what our ornament looks like. Not too shabby. I will, of course, be adding ribbon to all of my ornaments. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. 
We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to my computer and you may have to turn on your machine to get the software going. And I'm going to mark on the side laser flat so that we can design what we want to do on our wood. And once we do that, the software will actually take you through all the steps, step by step, to connect your F1 slide extension. It does need to be calibrated, so don't skip this step. Once that is complete, you want to set the platform across the bottom of your X-Tool F1. There are slots on the bottom that show you where to slide it in, and it, and it tells you to take it to the third line that is engraved on the bottom of the foot of the F1. It also has a movable ruler that we want to screw down to the left side beginning at the zero. At this point, I'm going back to my computer and I'm following all the instructions for tightening the platform to my F1. It is going to give you instructions for how to move it to the right and tighten the screw on the left. You don't tighten it all the way. Then you will move the platform to the left and again, you will tighten it, but not all the way. At this point, we're going to click on Next, and then you can see our platform starts to move. And it will tell us again to go back and fully tighten the screws on the left and the right. And at this point, we're going back to our computer, and we're going to click on Complete to complete the connecting process. Then, of course, we're going to turn the knob on the right side of the machine to place the red dot and the blue light on top of each other and our laser is ready to go. Of course, when we place in our item, we want to redo this so that we allow for the thickness of the material that we're going to be cutting. I'm going to bring in a text box so I can type in the word welcome. Of course, when the box comes up and it's highlighted, you will actually type the material in the right-hand corner just to the side of your box there. It will say hello every time, and then we're going to backspace that and I'm going to be typing in the word welcome. I'll choose the font that I like from the list that is listed here. And I'm going to make sure the sizing is about 12 inches wide because I'm going to be using this on a 14 inch wood round. I placed my board on the platform right next to the ruler and up at the top, but I also have to clamp it down. And I'm not going to lie, that was the trickiest part was learning how to use the clamps that came with this X-Tool machine. But they are genius once you figure them out. Then I go back to my computer and I'm going to click on framing so that I can find out exactly where this is going to go. Although I looked at the measurements that are on the top of the diagram and that tells you exactly how tall and how wide your piece is going to be. But I did want to show you for the framing, you have to use the knob on the right side of the machine so that you can pull it out far enough to see how far it actually goes. Next, we'll click on processing and our platform begins to move and we'll go through the process of sending it to the machine. And of course, it will come up to another screen so that we can click start. And it doesn't ever start until we go to the right side of the machine and press the button on the side. I am going to speed up this process. It did take just over 11 minutes for this entire piece. That is pretty fast. And I forgot to tell you that I went in and selected on the screen three millimeter basswood. You will need to do that. If you want step-by-step -step, slowed down tutorial type instructions, please refer back to the first video that I did and I will leave a link in the description box below. The machine turns off when it's done and it also gives you a beeping sound. I reached around to the back and I'm going to turn off my machine and then we'll remove our cutting. It cut clean through and it is just beautiful. This is on a 14 inch wood round that I got at Hobby Lobby. I cannot wait to make this project for a friend for Christmas. I have the RA2 hooked up to my X-Tool F1. Isn't it a beaut? It came with this piece here so I can raise this end and that will help everything stay level. Comes with this handy dandy level that you place on the item you're going to be engraving or etching. And so we can make sure that it is level. It came with these rollers on it, 
but it also has different ways of presenting your material to put it in there to use. You can add additional pieces to the cog area here. You just screw those in and you can hold items from the inside. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. I'm going to first practice with this. You notice I took out the base plate here. I move it to the side to support our um, RA2. So it will keep everything nice and level while the uh, laser is working. And notice that the housing does have to stay open when you use this accessory tool, the RA2. So you do need to wear special safety glasses when you're using this unit. Now, when the sides are down, you don't have to worry about that because you're safe. So I have mine on the rollers. I wanted to try that first. We have everything supported. Now let's go to the software and I'm just going to program in something probably pretty simple for this first run. I wanted to experience my first run with you so you could see that it's not that difficult to do. Oh, I forgot to say, when I had to assemble this, you saw me unbox it. This part had to be um, screwed down onto this housing. So it was about two screws in here. There's a chuck on the side here. That took a little bit of figuring out how to do that, but um, that's what your belt goes on and it turns the chuck and so forth. And that's how your mug turns. So you can work on the rounded surface. So really excited to have this in my crafting tools that I can use for all kinds of projects. But I think my husband may be more excited about this one even than I am. So we're going to do this first time together. Let's go over and we'll program the computer. So let's go and get a new project. We have it here on the screen. We'll grab a text box. and It always comes up here, hello, but you type it over here in this text box on the side. And I'm just going to put in a name. That's the spacing we have right now. I'm going to leave it at regular. Going to go over here and click engrave. So that makes it solid now. Also, we're going to go to manual setting. All right, so let me get out of that for a moment. I'm going to come over here. Laser flat is what all of us normally have our lasers on. And I'm going to click on it and bring down laser cyl cylindrical. There you go laser cylindrical so that changes everything about what we're going to do so we have the name we need to first of all turn it in the direction that it will go on the cup it matters which end is up so everything's directional so I'm going to turn mine that way and I am sure it is going to be too big so we will size it back down I'm going to go up here and look Actually, it's not that bad. It says two, almost two inches height, and that's what we want it to be at. I'm going to move it down, and we'll just have to play with it here in a moment. So we're going to go over. We're on manual setting. It is on engrave. We've got our power here and our speed, and we are going to do our power, and I did a lot of research on this. We're going to do the power at 100. So let's move this to 100 all the way up. The speed we're going to do at 400. So it's going to be moving pretty fast. And then for passes, we're going to do two. We're going to do two passes. Okay, we're going to do the first one on blue light. So we have that clicked right there blue light and then once we do these two passes what we're going to do is going to do a second pass with the infrared light okay so I have to pull my screen up and we have text we got engrave manual setting we have it on the blue light which we're going to do first we'll do two passes at a hundred percent power the speed we want to do at 400 and then we'll do two passes so we have all of that programmed in once we finish these two passes you want to come back and there's another trick to kind of clean up the area around and you don't have to do so much scrubbing so we'll come back in and we'll put it on infrared and we'll run it for just 
one pass and uh, we'll use the same speeds pretty much. So we're looking at 100 in power and 400 for speed. And I'm going to turn on the laser and then we'll check our spacing. So our laser is coming up. We want to go over and connect our device. We've got it on USB, so it'll take a second. We may have to refresh it. That's normal. And see, it came right up. And now our machine is connected. So we want to go to framing and frame it out. The dots you want more on the top of the mug, and you can see right here they're on the side. So I'm going to shift everything forward. We also want to move these two dots together. Let's make sure it's level, a little off. When I moved it, I changed it. Okay, it's pretty level. Okay, I'm going to move this down. The framing is done. So we've moved it where our laser is on top and I think everything is good to go. I'm not expecting this to be perfect because first time and all y'all. But um, we're going to go to process. I'm gonna go to start. This won't start the machine. We'll have to push the button on the side. So we're going back and we need to change some settings. We're going to go here at manual settings and we're going to change it to infrared. And I think I'm going to change the passes to one. And by the way, that didn't take very long at all. I was so nervous that I forgot to see how long it took. I would, I'm thinking about 10 minutes for that small name and you can see it's looking great already. So we will go in and we'll process it again. We're going to push start, but it won't really start until we push the button on the side and it says it is ready. And wow, that looks really good. I know what you're thinking. It's way too close to the top. Well, this is my practice cup, so I'm still learning my first time to do this. So I'm pretty excited. That looks really nice on that cup, y'all. That looks really good. Um, I was so nervous, but it, it looks great. It looks absolutely fabulous. Now I just have to figure out my spacing. So I think what I'll do is I'll set up for another project uh, and do another uh, engraving on this cup. And let's see how that one turns out going to go to OK. And I know where I got that. Let's go in and try to get another shape. I'm uh, moving a star over. I'm going to reduce the size. Let's see if we can just straighten it up a bit. We have engrave. Let's check our settings. Change the power to 100 and we'll change the speed to 400. I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to be doing this one. Let me click on it again. Object. Engrave. Manual setting. Laser type. Let's go back. Laser cylindrical auto planing framing. All right, we'll frame it out. Object setting engrave. All right, so I put a star below the name, and I'm not sure about the spacing here. We will see. I left it exactly where it ended up. But here is our star. I clicked on engrave. Let's go down to manual setting and pull up our settings. We're going to go to blue light, power 100, speed 400 because we are engraving on this metal cup. And then we're going to go in and do a little framing. 
and I'm not sure this is going to space correctly. This is why you need to do it when you do it the first time. I'm going to put my laser in the center of the O. I put my laser in the center of the O because I think we'll have better luck with that, but we shall see. But we have our settings. We'll go over those one more time because I like to make sure. All right. Now let's click on the object. Go in and check. Engrave. All right. We've got our power 100, our speed at 400. We did our framing. Let's go to process. And it will bring it up and give us a preview. We did our framing. Let's go to process. We should get a preview. And there it is. There's our star. And we're going to hope for the best on this. I'm going to click start. Of course, it doesn't really start. We push the button on the side. And you can see the star is here. So it's better to plan ahead of time and do your objects first. I will come up with another star maybe in that area. Um, but I want to go ahead and do the cleanup. So let's go back. We'll say OK for done. Click on the object. Pull up this information. And we're going to change it to infrared. And we'll run that to do our cleanup. And probably I'll come back later and put some more stars on there. And we'll just kind of balance it out. So let's get ready for our cleanup. We're going to process it again. Get our preview. We'll push start. And it'll bring up what the preview of the screen for what it's going to do next. And then, of course, it's ready to go. We have to push the button on the side of the machine. That's a safety feature. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my machine and take out the cup and let's look at it. So here's what we have on the cup. Again, the spacing's on me. I need to play with it and move it up a little bit, but at least I did get it on the cup, right? And then we have our star. I should not have moved it from where the first pass went through. I got a little nervous because it starts on the side and works across. Y'all, this is my practice cup. I'm going to keep working at it. I have to say x is not the problem at all. Their product is amazing. This is my first time I wanted to do it with y'all on camera. I love it. The cleanup, oh my goodness. I heard people complain about other lasers. This one, maybe a tiny bit of cleanup, but I am excited. I cannot wait to try glass etching next. Um, yeah, that's coming up, but I'm getting some new safety glasses that are coming, so I don't have to run every time I turn the laser on. I do have one pair, but I don't trust them. So I'm getting my X Tool safety glasses. And then tomorrow, Wow, sky's the limit, y'all. In the next live, you may see me showing all kinds of new products that I have done with my X tool. I would like to personally thank Heidi at X tool for letting us partner with them this year. It has been amazing and so exciting. I cannot wait to use this even more in my craft room. Y'all know I'm going to be using that slide all the time to make words for my wood rounds. I don't have to run to Hobby Lobby anymore. I can do it on my own. And I just wanted to tell you that that board was about $4 and I'm going to get two big words out of that. If I do welcome again, I get two. So that's $2 each. And that's still way cheaper than what I would pay at Hobby Lobby. But if you buy your own wood and have it cut apart, even cheaper, there's so much you can do y'all to save money. I am so excited about this machine and I know you will be too. And guess what? In the description box below, there are coupons and they are running massive sales till the end of December. So get that money from all your friends and family for Christmas and you tell them this is exactly what you want. An X-Tool F1. It is portable. You can take it to craft shows. It weighs almost nothing. And it has wonderful accessories. You saw that slide that lets me do the big words. And then also, this is another accessory and we can do the cups. I love it, y'all. 
I hope you have a Merry Christmas and I hope you get everything you want. And this should be at the top of your list. Y'all have a great weekend and Merry Shopping. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.